A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. This is Rebel Force Radio. Your source for the Force. Star Wars news and commentary. With Jason Swank and Jimmy Mack. I've seen Star Wars 500 times. Star Wars number one. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. Now it's time for Rebel Force Radio. We would be honored if you would join us. All right, Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to another year of Rebel Force Radio. Your source for the Force and so much more. Now, if you've been hanging out with us on the Boba Fett after show, then uh, you haven't had too much time to miss us, I suppose. But I reckon some of you out there that listen to RFR, maybe you haven't. Maybe you haven't started watching the Book of Boba Fett on Disney+. Plus. And uh, joined us for our breakdowns of each and every chapter. We are doing that. You can check it out live on Wednesday nights on YouTube. And of course, if you're subscribed to the podcast, you're getting those as well. But anyway, so great to be back with you. Like I say, uh, Happy New Year. We're looking at uh, January 2022. And if you thought that last year was a big year for Star Wars, I don't think you've seen anything yet. We are about to be hit, I think, by an absolute avalanche of uh, new Star Wars stories. And, and that's just talking about the stuff that's coming our way, I think, through Disney+. Plus. If you're a reader of the books and the comics and all that, of course, you've got uh, probably more Star Wars than you can possibly handle. Hey, speaking of more Star Wars than you can handle, I know a guy that can handle as much Star Wars as you can throw at him, and that's my good friend and yours from Chicago, Jimmy Mack. Hey, Jason. Hey, Star Wars fans. Pull up your candy-colored Vespa speeders. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, let's spend some time talking Star Wars with uh, two of, two of the original scug holes of Star Wars podcasting, <laughs> Jason and myself. Take it from an ex bounty hunter. Don't work for scug holes. The biggest scug holes in Star Wars podcasting, <laughs> I should say. We, we're going to have to lock that little slogan down. Maybe yeah. bumper sticker or something. Jason and so, Jimmy. Yeah, so much for uh, your source for the force. Uh, Rebel Force yeah. Radio, a couple of scug holes. Yeah. Your source for the scug holes. <laughs> so that's what this is all about. Uh, you know, call the neighbors, wake the kids. It is going to be a big year for Star Wars. I mean, oh, the biggest we've huge. ever seen. So uh, I'm happy to be back in the saddle with the weekly RFR. Um, took a tiny bit of downtime during the holidays. But uh, kept busy with RFR Q&A over on Patreon. We released a bunch of fun episodes. And uh, then, of course, the Book of Boba Fett dropped. And, man, did it hit like a, a meteorite. And uh, we've been uh, consumed with Boba Fett. And this yeah. show, this week, we're going to uh, look very closely at uh, some of the activity that's been happening as the Book of Boba Fett media tour has been underway. And uh, Tim Morrison, Ming-Na Wen, Robert Rodriguez, they've been talking to the press. And uh, we have some highlights from interviews that they've done. I'm really um, looking forward to that because, you know, um, it, it means a lot more now that we're three episodes in when we hear them talking about it. Especially Rodriguez, you know, yeah, Tim and Ming as well. Um, just mm -hmm. to hear what you know what what they're saying on the trail versus what we're seeing on the screen and how much of it actually matches up we've we've actually kind of pointed at jim some of some discrepancies between with the way robert rodriguez was describing things prior to the debut of book of boba fett uh comments about what we were seeing in the trailers and 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 how much we were seeing actually of the series proper in those trailers and just certain things not to nitpick too much but you know, that's what we do here, right? We pick nits. Right, right. And uh, Robert Rodriguez, you know, he's uh, he's on the hot seat right now. <laughs> he is on the hot seat right now. Is, uh, the book of Boba Fett has been a little bit divisive for yeah. uh, some of the fan base. But uh, I'm in for the long haul. 
And I believe that uh, we are in uh, the middle of a, a long story, and, and the middle part sometimes is kind of slow, but this is a mini series that I think needs to be looked at on a whole. And what I've seen so far, I really like. Um, now, I think a lot of the criticisms people have will change once they're able to see the entire story all played out. Okay. And it could be for better or for worse. I don't know. I mean, maybe there's going to be something going on here where I'll then start sticking my nose up at this show and start getting <laughs> really harshly critical. But right now I'm, I'm in for the ride. I, I've loved Boba Fett for a long time. I uh, enjoy to see the evolution of a character. Uh, Sure, I was expecting maybe a little bit more of that Clint Eastwood style mm. act, activity going on. And, and man, I, I thought we would have seen the appearance of at least one of the famous bounty hunters from The Gathering on Darth Vader's Star Destroyer and Empire Strikes Back. We yeah. haven't even had hints of that outside of Trandoshans being present, representing right. Bosk. But, uh, you know, I, I'd like a, a Dengar curveball thrown at us. or Why not? You know, maybe a Zuckus. Well, maybe you know, I love, I love what IG-11, sort of the, the new perspective IG-11 gave us for uh, IG-88. And it would be, I was just thinking, it would be great to get that sort of uh, experience with uh, Forlom, something like that, where you see him and he's basically just a glorified statue, you know, in the movie. But to see him like moving around and kicking ass would be a lot of fun. Just again, like we saw with mm -hmm. IG-88 didn't look that intimidating, you know, in the, in the, in the movie. But mm -hmm. once you saw what IG-11 was capable of, then yeah. you realize how this thing was was a bounty hunter. But something I wanted to mention, I had a chance to talk with a with a friend of mine who is, uh, I love talking to Star Wars fans, um, well, of all kinds, but I like talking to the ones that are maybe a little bit detached from from organized fandom or, or online fandom. Because I think that that's largely the audience for a show like, like Book of Boba Fett. People mm -hmm. that love Star Wars, but you know, they're not necessarily listening to Star Wars podcasts, shame on you. And um, so I was talking to a buddy about this last episode and the, you know, the divisive nature of the, the gang. And he's like, he goes, I don't know. I love that gang. It was just like so 80s. And yeah, when I think sure about was. Star Wars, I think about 80s. And I was like, OK, all right. I get that perspective. He was thinking that they were really keeping it kind of in that whole milieu, you know, of 70s, 80s and borrowing from, you know, different movies that were popular at that time. So. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was a, an interesting perspective, but one other thing I wanted to bring up too, before we get into uh, some follow-ups from uh, last year is Jim, we went into book of Boba Fett under the assumption that this would be likely one season and done. At least I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. think this was going to do anything other than just kind of explore this character that they introduced in, uh, in, in Mandalorian. We're hearing some rumors that that may not be the case, that there could already be a uh, book of Boba Fett season two, uh, maybe actively being written. Um, and that could impact perhaps the pacing of this, of this, uh, of this season, of this, of this mini series, couldn't it? If they know they've got another season coming up. Nothing I've heard indicates that a second season has been green lit. So I don't know what to think. I, I really don't know what to think about that. Well, I think there's a lot of potential for it. I've heard a, I heard a hint dropped by someone. It might have even been by Tim Morrison himself. Who, well, I'm thinking of our Jedi Council. Oh, there was the a, Council. There was a little, yeah, there was a little comment dropped by him. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. um, okay, okay, I could see that. I could see that. Um I think that there's definitely huge potential for that because you're pushing Boba Fett off into this whole different area. I mean, his character mm -hmm. is evolving into something completely different and they could just keep, keep on keeping on with that. As far as I'm concerned, you know, keep the character alive and vibrant and in front of us and getting in all kinds of adventures on uh Tatooine. Are, are you feeling a little grounded Tatooine. on Tatooine and uh, Tatooine Tatooine? Hey, um, <laughs> I'm not feeling uh, grounded on Tatooine. No. I tell you what, I am feeling. I'm feeling a little bit boxed in by the by how small the cast is. You know, we keep seeing the same characters over and over, despite mm. the fact that you know 
part of the, the Boba's uh, journey here is to consolidate power. And I, I would have thought by now we would have seen him mm. uh, interacting with more diverse characters and a greater cast of characters. But my God, we even see the uh, what the the DMV guy, whatever his name is, uh, you know, with the mullet. <laughs> working DMV at the mayor's guy. office the clerk he's just the clerk, the clerk. yeah yeah the I, mayor's I look at him clerk. and i think dmv, the DMV guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh so i mean when that guy shows up in in more than one episode i'm like wait wait what's going on here well yes 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 there is that there there's there's a flow of continuity i don't mind it um mm-hmm. because new characters are being introduced every week I'll tell you a character I certainly want to see much more of is Kurt Santon. He's amazing. Yeah, me too. What an incredibly expressive Wookiee. That face of his is so expressive. I think he's just such a badass. And I've loved it every second he's been on screen thus far. I have loved it. And uh, it's amazing to see the fan community jump into action. Action figures, I should say, because... (laughs) Uh, the week after his debut, I already was seeing uh, people taking orders for vintage style Kersantan action figures. Customs? The custom guys Customs, are at, at it? yes. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the technology has come home to uh, so many of those guys who uh, really can knock out uh, quick. I don't know how they do it. Do they do it on computers? They must. I don't know. And then they create these patterns. It's like magic to me. (laughs) They create these 3D models and then feed it into their 3D printer. And the access they have to the plastics these days are so accurate when you compare it to the vintage Kenner or -hmm. even modern day Hasbro. Yeah. And it's really fun to watch all of that stuff and to occasionally drop down a few C notes on several of them. <laughs> because I mean, you know, yeah. they don't come cheap either. You no, have to really because well, they're, they're 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 boutique. I look at them mm-hmm. as like sort of custom custom made. You know, they mm-hmm. really are. They're custom made. Totally collectibles. custom. It's totally it's, custom. Uh, yeah. 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 So Boba Luga, Boba Luga. He's. I think he's a friend of ours. Um, Boba Luga is, uh, check him out on Facebook and, uh, he's got some good stuff going on. There's a bunch of other guys. I order from Stan Solo sometimes. He has some really good stuff. And, uh, there's other guys out there too. There's a rivalry among a lot of them. So you have to, you know, beware. You don't want to ruffle any feathers. I certainly don't. (laughs) And I'm not, I'm not trying to play favorites by giving plugs on this show, but I mean, I just enjoy the hobby. That's, that's the only thing I'm in it for is to enjoy the the toys. I just want the fix. I don't care. I don't care who has a problem with who. Yeah, right, right. Who's muscling keep on whose out territory? Keep me out of it. I like. I like all of you guys, and I love what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, if I you're making you good stuff, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Because you guys are rebels. Like we're rebels here, at Rebel Force Radio. So we want you to continue contributing to Star Wars fandom in such cool ways. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Well, we've got lots more to talk about. Uh, res- with respect to the man, or yeah, the Mandalorian, <laughs> the book of Boba Fett. Oh, that's mm. that reminds me. I just dropped the Mando thing. And you said because um, you know we just wrapped up the uh, the RFR uh, after show for this last episode, and some things were kind of replaying in my brain. And one other comment I wanted to make is, and, and you alluded to it a little bit ago, you were expecting a little bit more of that man with no name, Clint Eastwood style uh, Boba Fett. Is it possible that in creating the Mandalorian story, character, all of that, that they might have used up yeah. some of those qualities in that character. And so when they came to making a Boba Fett show, they thought, oh boy, we, you know, we can't repeat ourselves. We got to make these guys very distinctive. Too true. Too true. Yeah. And I think some of that might get discussed in uh, some of the sound bites we have coming ah. up with the cast and crew. But um, I agree with you 100%. It wouldn't be the first time it ever happened in Star Wars. Savage Press, ring any bells? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Brother, like, brother, brother, brother. They develop <laughs> Savage as a character, and then all of a sudden, George is like, yeah, now we're bringing Maul back. It's like, wait a second. We already gave Savage the double-bladed lightsaber and everything. Yeah. He's got the horns. He's got the tattoos. Well, he's yellow. What do you want? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Let's get a whole bunch of them. So yeah. that's uh, kind of what's happening now with Mandalorians and things like that. There's a rumor out there that there's a Bo-Katan, 
Or do you say Catan? I'm, you know, I'm a Catan guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're Midwestern boys. Right, and we right. go Catan. And um, Bo Catan, no relation to Chris Catan, former SNL uh, guy. Oh, Mr. Peepers. <laughs> <laughs> Night at the Roxbury. Yeah, right. So Chris, and he was also on the middle. Um Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, and he's going to have nothing to do with Star Wars, probably. But I shouldn't say that. There are so many comedians, that, you know, former SNL. Uh, Horatio Sands, of course, had his day in the sun with Star Wars. Um, unlikely to return. Uh, and it, we were taking, mm. we were trying to count all the comedians that have shown up in the Book of Boba Fett and The Mandalorian. You know, David Pasquese, who's uh, the... The Major Domo, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Amy Sedaris. Bill Burr. Right. Uh, you know, there's been several. Even that guy from News Radio in Office Space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's like actors who are connected more with the comedy end of the acting spectrum than like sci-fi fantasy, action adventure, that kind of thing. Right. Right. And, you know, there might be some real uh, intention behind that because uh, uh, in, some, in some cases they probably are to Star Wars fans or, or fans of genre TV, they might be lesser known. So if you start getting, you know, actors that used to be in Firefly or Babylon 5 or Next Gen, uh, then you go, oh, that's, oh, no, that's, that's, uh, kid, that's Q. I don't want Q in my Star Wars. That's weird. So, you know, you cast a Bill Burr. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, 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 yeah. it's different. I like, and, uh, I really love, you know, I mean, George was outside of a, a few, like, you know, notable uh, actors, Alec Guinness and Peter Cushing. You know, George was very sp- into kind of casting these blank slates, these unknown actors. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's something I've always been very grateful for. I mean, it might not have worked out always for, for, for some of them, but I've always been grateful for that because uh, it just allowed those characters to uh, just be so much more real to me over the years. I agree. Um, and that's kind of the approach I hope they take when choosing the, the next James Bond. I'd really like an unknown mm. actor That'd be to fill that role. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, someone well, who doesn't have a lot of baggage. You know, I mean, what what did you know about Daniel Craig before? Yeah, not much. He did Bonnie, Little Miss Sunshine? I don't know. No, um, the only thing I remembered him from was uh, The Road to Perdition. Uh, a great oh, yeah, movie yeah. with uh, Tom mm-hmm. Hanks. Uh, yeah. But I had to be reminded. In Illinois. I, oh, is that right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I had to be reminded that that was the guy. When, when he was cast as Bond, it, was, it wasn't like I went, oh, the guy from Rota. I had to read up. Oh, that guy. Yeah, Layer so Cake. It wasn't that obvious. Layer Cake, yeah. I think was that he was in the Little movie Miss Sunshine. Why did I edge. say Little Miss Sunshine? Is he in that? I don't think he is. I don't know. I've I, never seen I can't Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> right, Steve either. Carell. I don't um, know. Why did I say at, uh, Alan Arkin. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, know. I don't, I just, I wanted to know. I like to think of Jimmy Mac watching Little Miss Sunshine, crying, eating some ice cream at night. Everybody else is in bed. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, a you tearjerker know, it's, from what I hear. It's, it's, it's cool to cry at movies now. I know. So, uh, you know, people were crying at the uh, Spider-Man movie, which I saw and really enjoyed. Oh, um, I do one, have to yeah. say, because I think I kind of gave you crap about this. Uh-oh. So, as, as some people might know, uh, longtime listeners of the show... Uh, so Bailey and I have been on a quest. My daughter and I, we've been on a quest. We wanted to watch all of the Marvel movies and, and, and so that we could catch up. Mm-hmm. And we just finished Endgame. I know, I'm years behind everybody. Mm-hmm. But I remember when you were talking about it, and you were sort of comparing it as, as, you know, as the, the Star Wars Skywalker saga was wrapping up. You compared it a little bit to Endgame um, in the emotional tug that it, you know, could have had, should have had, what have you. And you said that you found yourself, despite not thinking you were that connected to those characters from the Marvel film, surprised at yeah. how emotional that, that ending was. And we watched yes. it last weekend, and I, I totally uh, agree, and I was right there with you. Really? It was, yo, yeah, it really I, was. I couldn't believe it, it, it was happening me. when it was happening. What's that? And now it's now it's happening every movie I go to. Oh Rise no! Rise of Skywalker, <laughs> Ghostbusters. I, you're you're balling every day, all oh over these God. movies. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, you should see me at Ghostbusters. It was embarrassing. Oh. It was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, Harold Ramis. 
ghosts. Oh my god, I can't believe it's his ghost. It's like he's really here, man. I can't. Oh, oh it's so sweet. Um, oh, spoiler alert. Yeah, sorry spoiler about alert. that. But I mean, yeah. you know what? If you have, you, did you see the ghost? Alert. Oh, okay. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah. 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 Did you see the yet. Ghostbusters? No, 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 no. And I you know what though? The 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 spoiler for me was the action figure. They put out an action figure of uh of that moment. They put a two pack out of that moment. Mm-hmm. And I saw it and I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, okay. So I guess that happens. <laughs> uh well, but I'm really excited. I'm actually gonna see it this weekend because I I I, did, I bought it on iTunes. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna watch that this weekend and then we're gonna go see the Spider Man movie this weekend. The new one. Harold Ramis has a presence throughout the entire Ghostbusters film. And it's oh, really? really really nice the way they, they pulled that off, I thought. They did Ooh. a fantastic, fantastic job. And, um, you know, Hollywood magic, yeah. But, yeah. but very effectively put into use. So uh, I wish Lucasfilm wasn't so stubborn about the CGI Princess Leia in The mm. Rise of Skywalker because then they could have carried through with, uh, you know, a plan. Um, but right. they were very stern about that. And it's hard because emotions running high. Carrie had just passed away. It's it's hard. Yeah. It's just hard, you know, in those types of situations. In this situation, Harold's been gone for a while now. Yeah. When did Harold Ramis pass away? I think around 2014. But also it helped that he and Dan Aykroyd we're very close. Uh, he had yeah. a little falling out with Bill Murray, but yeah, um, but they patched it up. They patched it. Did, up did they patch the it up at the end? Yeah, towards the end. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, Bill came back out to the Chicago suburbs. Uh, Harold was living on the North Shore, in Glencoe, and Bill showed up unannounced at the <laughs> Glencoe fire station, saying, "Do you know where Harold Ramis lives?" So they're like, holy crap, it's Bill Murray. He takes pictures with everyone and stuff. And then they put him on the ladder truck and drive him over to Ramus. Oh, house. my God. He shows up to Harold Ramus's house on the on the fire truck? Yes, unannounced. Unbelievable. I Listen, I, maybe I might be embellishing with the fire truck part. That's how <laughs> I, I see it in it, my head. I wouldn't put it but past. But they, they, uh, they, they, they gave him at least directions or escorted him yeah. there or something. And then Bill sat there with Harold for the afternoon and just talked and talked. And it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. Gosh, yeah. that's great. That's good news. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing Spider-Man and looking forward to uh, some more RFR here. So let's get to our first voicemail. How about this? You must contact me. Play back the entire message. What message? Message after the message. The Emperor commands you to make contact with him. It's a trick. Send no reply. All right, before we I play the voicemail, you, hey, Jimmy Mac. Oh, can I can I just say that we this yeah. this deserves a little bit of setup, I think. Oh, you want to do the setup first? Oh, okay. All right. All right. I do, I do. I, I wanted to uh remind everyone because it's been a month since we've been has- on the air essentially with the weekly RFR, and we wanted to follow up on that Salt Lake City newscaster. <laughs> <laughs> that we uh, we talked about, and uh, the rest of his news team, uh, who we kind of, uh, you know, had a good time at their expense. Um, well, in fairness, she was having a good time at his expense, so... Fair is fair, right? Well, it's it's yes, it's it's the cross we we bear <laughs> as Star Wars fans. Is every once in a while we have to take a few proton torpedoes. Um, <laughs> Is it proton or photon? It's proton. Photon is is the track, right? Yeah. How does that yeah. work? I, I don't so. know. Look it I up. So. Look it up on the pedias. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Dan Spindle, KSL Salt Lake City News, is a Rebel Force Radio listener, and uh, we got uh, an at Rebel Force Radio on the uh, or at RFR Rebel Force, which is our actual Twitter handle. Uh, please follow us on Twitter, by the way. We're trying to build up a following there. So uh, we've only had a Twitter account for a couple of years, and uh, most people don't know we're on Twitter. So follow us. You get all kind of cool announcements, things like that. Wacky retweets, what have you. you, you retweets of Paul Bateman stuff, which is always <laughs> just its so much fun. It's so oh, here he is fun. going off on zippers. Yeah. Last time. How old is this? No freaking zippers. 
<laughs> like it's it, this is a galaxy far, far away, not urban outfitters. <laughs> That's what Paul says. Uh, and man, people piled on him like crazy. Oh, yeah, uh, Pablo grabbed funny. a hold of that tweet and uh, said it was a weird hill to die on. And then he had a gif of Luke Skywalker zipping up his X-Wing pilot suit in Empire Strikes Back as he's leaving the sick bay to go and jump into his snow speeder to take on the ad ads. So uh, Pablo oh. said it was a weird hill to die on. And then proved Paul wrong, showing him that there's been zippers there all along. But what Paul's saying is, aesthetically, those zippers are never noticeable. No. And it was just kind of interesting to see Luke getting ready that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Because he gets out of that suit then on Dagobah. So kind of yeah. knowing he had the zipper with clothes on underneath sort of helps with that transition into his Dagobah fatigues. But what Paul's saying is that aesthetically, right? They weren't they flapping around there in the wind, you know. Right? They, you know, with the big, the big tag there, and <laughs> it just looks like it's off the rack stuff, right? Taken from you know any hipster store, and so that's what Paul's saying. And you don't ever argue with with Paul Bateman's keen eye when it comes to the designs in Star Wars. It's just no. I don't think there's anybody around who uh, didn't directly work on the films who understands it the way Paul does. And Paul probably understands it better than a lot of the people who actually did work on the films. He's a student. He's a scholar. Yeah, absolutely is. So. so, yeah, that's a great reason to be following us on Twitter because you get to uh, be privy to some of that stuff. Uh, so that's cool. Dan Spindle. Dan he's on he's on Twitter and he's also at the anchor desk at KSL Salt Lake City. And uh, there was a, a Star Wars back and forth going on because his weather guy was trying to make a reference to Hoth. Oh, and we got so the we video pick it up. here. Do you want, you want me to go ahead and play it? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, because yeah. uh, pick, we pick it up right when Dan is correcting the weather guy. Oh, right. This is definitely uh, the one for the record books, for sure. All right, Alex Cabrera can't let the Star Wars reference go unanswered. It would be the ice world of Hoth. That's where That's you right. would be right you now. It. You need a Tauntaun to get around because <laughs> even the Rebel Alliance couldn't adjust the speeders to you that. You guys are a bunch of geeks. Thing. Right here. All right, thanks, Alex. Uh, be sure to stick with us all morning long. Look at him owning yeah, it. There it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, right here. Owning it. Say it loud, say it proud. So, uh, Dan Spindle uh, heard our little uh, breakdown of his news report there, his his, his uh, anchor chair correction <laughs> to his his weather guy, and uh, he follows up with this voicemail. Uh, hey, Jason. Hey, Jimmy Mack. Dan Spindle, your news anchor friend from Salt Lake City. I really appreciate you guys uh, giving me some Star Wars love in the last episode. I woke up this morning, my two teenage kids who, who work late, they texted me, Dad! You're on RFR. Check it out. And Because uh, I was right in the middle of listening. I break it up over the course of three or four days on my commute. And I pulled it up and listened. And, yes, we were talking about that clip um, that I posted from one of our reporters who, here just to clear it up, what he had said, because the full clip is way too long. It's this big, long weather hit. He had said, oh, look at the, the snow piling up. It's like that planet. Oh, Dan will know this one. And then by the time he tossed back to me, I said, well, I couldn't let that go unanswered and yes i said it was hoth and uh my uh, my co-anchor shara in the fun good fun and jest she said um you're such geeks so i did take uh jason's advice check out my twitter handle now i put instead of star wars geek i put star wars fanatic i kind of in the past did it like jimmy max said which is you kind of own the term i'm a nerd i'm a geek i love star wars but i put star wars fanatic let's just uh, state it how it needs to be said loud and proud uh, appreciate you guys. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Look forward to great RFR content in 2022 uh, here from Salt Lake City. Take it easy, guys. Always uh, much Star Wars love from us in the uh, in the Rockies. May the force be with you. We can see it. Here he is. Here's Dan on Twitter. Yes, uh, Star Wars. History nerd. Now, he's keeping the nerd moniker for the history part, but mm -hmm. Star Wars fanatic is there. So, uh, okay. All right. That's great. Uh, What's his Twitter handle? It's at Dan Spindle, S P I N D L E K S L. So, yeah, yeah, yeah K S L. 
Yeah. So follow Dan and uh, tell him he's cool for being a Star Wars fan. Hey, and also he's cool for saying Hoth and not Starkiller Base. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> you know, I, I, I tell you, it's so... I don't know if I should be proud or if I should be sad. I don't know how to feel about the fact that so much of the sequel trilogy has just not stuck. You know, like it's not at the tip of my tongue like everything else, even the prequels. Um, well, you know, I shouldn't I mean, say even the prequels. That's uh, that's 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 derogatory towards me. I shouldn't say it that mm -hmm. way. I mean, even the you know the the newer stuff. So it's not like I'm sitting here some original trilogy purist. Not that there's anything wrong with that. We know you're out there listening, but um, th that's not that's not my that's not my thing. I mean, I I can you know there's Mandalorian stuff that sticks out. There's obviously Clone Wars and Rebel stuff that we've digested here. But when it comes to the sequel trilogy, which there's a lot of it that mm -hmm. I that mm -hmm. I like. Yeah. But I have a hard time recalling it. Hmm. So yeah. Well, give it a, give it a spin, man. Maybe I need you to might break get something out of it that you uh, haven't gotten out of it before. You know. Yeah. Time adds yeah. perspective, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. That's why fandom is always evolving. At least it is for me, because yeah. time adds perspective. So yeah, give it a spin. Yeah. Maybe you might feel differently about it have you ever been able to sit there and watch him with parker and like where he kind of he's he's following along with everything and bailey was really more my my sequel trilogy yeah. she really loved ray she was my sequel trilogy kid right. but uh, uh but with but mm -hmm. but part he parker was a little bit too young but it might be time to uh open him up to that but yeah. i'm really surprised i shouldn't say i'm surprised but i am surprised um mm -hmm. That Bailey has turned out, my 13 year old daughter has turned out to be my movie bud. Whereas mm. Parker, you know, he's now he's all about the football and the soccer. And, uh, he really <laughs> he's is. A jock. He's, he's a little, little meathead. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> he's a jock, and, uh, and Bailey's always been she's more an artist. artistically yeah. driven, and she likes, uh, she, she, she sees it on that level. So I think she's uh, got I a dig little crush on, uh, on uh, Spider Man, oh, right. though. Oh, Tom Holland. Tom Holland. I think she got a little crush. Yeah. yeah. She well, you know, he's in those tights. It's kind of hard <laughs> to resist, really. It is. Um, hey, you know something that I wanted to mention? Um, thank you, everybody, over the holiday season that bought our Chut Chut t shirts. They sold like crazy. We still have them, they are still available. You can uh, get them on our website. I'll go to rebelforceradio.com and you'll see the, uh, the banner there on the, uh, the right hand side. So uh, please uh, pick them up. Uh, they're available in multiple colors. And uh, when I, I had one on a couple weeks ago. And, and I, Jim, you were like all complimentary. You're like, hey, look at that T-shirt. That's cut pretty nice. These yeah, are really, really quality tees. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm about 5'4", 150, 560 pounds. And the medium fits me perfectly. So... Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, yeah, get you a Chut Chut shirt now. And hopefully we'll be able to see you at some conventions in 2022 wearing those things. Yeah. We could do maybe a Chut Chut shirt group photo. <laughs> I remember those days. They still uh, exist. Uh, slave Here's layers? All the slave layers. Please report to the front of the... <laughs> That's the <laughs> ice cream maker guy from Cloud Oh, right, City. right, right. Oh, they wouldn't and, call uh, slave There's ladies. a group that gets together with, uh, they wear these red Millennium Falcon shirts that were, they like sort of have this white graphic on it of the Millennium Falcon schematics. Oh, boy. And, yeah, and it was like a shirt that they must have sold out of big box stores or something because everyone seems to have one. And they get together for group photos at these shows. I've seen Lando cosplayers do group photos, uh, you know, and they'll do separate days. They'll have like a Cloud City Lando day. And then they'll really? have, a, yeah, yeah, it's it's really wild, man. It's, it's wild what goes on out there. So we got to do a Chut Chut group photo. At some convention, it has to yeah. happen. If the big one's happening in Anaheim, if I, and I say if you know, yeah, it's still a question. I say mark. if I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about that all mm. going down. So much so, I'm not booking a flight right now. I want to see how it all plays out. Um, Playing the long game. 
Well, yeah, you know, I, I think by March we'll have mm. a better picture of what's going on with this event, but events for 2022 are unfortunately getting canceled yeah. left and right. Uh, yeah. The big video game thing, the E3, that right. was, uh, that's gone virtual. CES went virtual this year. Uh, I know mm. a lot of concert tours, uh, too. Um, yeah, the New York Toy Fair. Is that officially uh, yeah. not happening? Okay, so that's virtual mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I, I, I hope that this is uh, that, that that how to put this nicely. Um, I hope that it's perhaps maybe a little uh, when when we start getting into like spring and summer events. I hope it's a little overreactionary. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope we're not looking at a reason to really be uh, not getting together in in spring and summer. I I know the holiday season was just brutal. Yeah, uh, with the uh, with the pandemic, but gosh, when you think about getting into you know into uh, you know May and June and July uh, and not being able to get together, and a lot of it varies, you know, state by state. You know, that's that's another factor too. So the you know the sometimes the politics of the uh, of the region or of the state might 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 influence you know what you can do or not. But yeah, I'm man. hoping I I bought a ticket. Uh, I have a yeah. ticket to the uh, actual convention. <laughs> Oh, I great. got a four day pass and uh, we're on the lookout for more. But uh, no, I, I, I'm kind of with you, Jim. I mean, in working in live entertainment, I'm I'm seeing the same thing. So, yeah, yeah. I'd say it's 50 yeah. 50 at this point. I think I me think. and I think me and Billy Mac do have access to the event. <laughs> so, <laughs> OK, I don't think we're looking necessarily. Um Hey, keep it tuned here if we don't. Right. Because we'll be saying it loud, saying it proud here on this show. Please. Yeah. Anybody got please, a ticket? Uh, ticket? 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 That'll be the whole show. Just us. Anybody got a ticket? I need a miracle. I need a miracle. <laughs> Who's got two? Who's yeah. got two? Well, yeah. I had an opportunity to buy this one. And I know we have, look, I mean, I, you know, we're powerful and influential members of the Star Wars media. I don't think we're not going to get into a Star Wars convention, but I had the opportunity to buy this one and it just made me feel better having it, you know, like, okay, I, this is my insurance policy. I got a four day or we're, we're doing can it. use it. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing the chut chut group photo, <laughs> chut chut shirt group photo. So that's going to be a thing. So you want to get your chut chut shirt now and be a part of it. And then we'll figure out the logistics of it all once we get to the actual convention center. I mean, we could just stand outside in front of the place, all five of us. Why not? Be great. <laughs> all five of us. Now I you, do know me, Billy Mac, Tyler, and Lyle. That'll yeah, be it. That's the Chut Chut gang. I I am uh, pretty <laughs> confident that we are going to be all hanging out at ICC or IC Collectors Convention, uh, mm. ICC con in uh in uh, late april early may or excuse me yeah. late march early april uh we're already making our our family plans to be there so uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna be fun I, I love nashville uh lived there for a while after college and i can't wait to go back cannot wait to go back so yeah that'll be a fun one so we'll be there rfr will be there and you can hang with us we'll be doing live podcasts from that convention at least one maybe two yeah. Again, logistics. So uh, we'll figure all that out. We'll do a chut chut shirt group photo at that event too, and um, you know we have plans to be at, at both events, uh, and so we have fingers crossed that they're going to happen. Yeah. Uh, which is going to be cool. We'll also have a Patreon get together at these events. Patreon exclusive. We'll figure out how that all work as well. We have no plans right now, folks. I mean, uh, but uh, but you know us. You know us. We'll figure it all out. We're just being kind of, um, I, we're just waiting. We're being patient to see how things play out. By March, we'll be laying down the deets. Trust yeah. me on that. Yeah. Trust me on that. So we'll have a Patreon hang at uh, Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim for sure. Patreon is the place to be. Patreon.com slash Rebel Force Radio. We have so much activity going on there. Early bird releases of shows, full show video. We have uh, collector spotlights now, which is I happening love regularly. These. these are great. Oh, I mean, amazing. We get to see our far Patreon supporters' private Star Wars collections and some of these shrines in uh, complete room collections are mind-boggling. And then some people just have a few things too. But 
they always have that one unique item you've never seen before. It's mm-hmm. like a handmade item, um, just beautiful artwork, you name it. And then uh, some of these other displays are simply stunning. That's a Rebel Force Radio exclusive, along with RFR Q&A. For only a buck, you're listening to RFR Q&A, and we have just released our 100th episode of RFR Q&A. I can't believe it. I'm really proud of that. It's me and uh, Matt Rashid talking about the Book of Boba Fett and the Beatles Get Back. And so it's uh, Boba Fett and the Beatles. Matt Rashid, of course, well, had Boba the Fett host and the Beatles. That now, show. I got to ask, how, how, how do they, what's the connection here? There is the, no connection. Oh. Um, RFR Q&A can be Star Wars, et cetera, in conversation. It just depends on what the RFR VIP wants to talk about. Right. And the VIP is the host of the show and directs what topics of conversation are uh, in play. And uh, we were wrapping up thoughts about the Book of Boba Fett, and Matt said, hey, did you see the Beatles documentary get back? (laughs) And that just unleashed the floodgates because... I'm a huge Beatles fan and have been for over 40 years. So it, it's really sad how I became a Beatles fan. It was when um, John Lennon was shot. Oh. And all of a sudden, the Beatles, you know, I was 11, 12 years old, and the Beatles were just all over the place. And I picked up this magazine about them and memorized the magazine and found myself going to the library to listen to their albums. It's crazy. It's crazy, but that's... Speaking of Beatles, I just picked up um, a new, uh, newly remastered Wings Over America oh, wow. uh, 3 LP. I'm, a, I'm, 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 a, I'm not... I'm no, I'm not a Beatles expert by any Swank. stretch. I enjoy the Beatles, but I am a... Swank, I am a the Paul, rocker. I am a big Paul McCartney I'd see fan. And yeah. I do love that Wings Over America, I think one of the greatest uh, live albums ever. And uh, it's got go. a great Jason version Swing. of Live and Let Die, by the way. Oh, that's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> oh now that's I actually, see. Now I see. Well, but that's actually how I, you know, <laughs> gateways, right? That's how I discovered yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul McCartney and Wings it works was for Live me. and Let Die. And I'm like, <laughs> I love that tune. What else does this guy have? Dude, it turns out <laughs> Paul McCartney's a big deal, man. That Paul McCartney. <laughs> he is oh. prolific. <laughs> oh, this is priceless. <laughs> this is this is classic swing. Dude, I yeah. love you, man. I, I don't say it often <laughs> enough. I just I look forward to talking to you every week. This is the highlight of my week. I just can't get enough, man. I can't get enough. And so we have this kind of fun over at the RFR on Patreon, too, and uh, other RFR Q&As released over the holidays include a Star Wars special edition pros and cons conversation I had with RFR VIP Jeff Holland, where we talk about all of George Lucas's changes and tweaks to Star Wars A New Hope, and that was a really nice, tight convo we had, and... uh, you know, these guys are becoming regulars amongst RFR on Patreon supporters where uh, people are like, oh, great, it's a Jeff Holland episode. <laughs> and I love that. I just yeah. love that. Yeah. RFR VIP Sean Wanty is another guy who is very active with the Q&A recording sessions. And we talked about what we think the end game for the Mandalorian story, might, you know, where things might be leading, you know, looking at big picture stuff, talking about the history of the Mandalores and... Or the Mandalorians and the Mandalores for that. Matter. I got I've got a QA in the hopper. I've been talking to Rob Strecker. Oh, he's a great guy. We yeah. are we are going to do a breakdown of the JJ Abrams Star Trek trilogy. Ooh. So yeah. Interesting. So I, People I, want I, to talk the Trek with Swank. Yeah, they seem to. I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, I'm happy to do it. In fact, he gave me an excuse. So I rebought the um, those films. I didn't. I didn't actually mm. own the third one. So I bought them in uh, in 4K, and uh, so we're doing a rewatch, and then he and I will get together in a in a couple weeks and uh, and record that. And I told him he's been so patient. I said, all right, because you were so patient with me over the holidays, uh, I said we'll do two. So we'll probably have to break it into two episodes because we really want to do an in depth 
look at these Great. three movies. Yeah, so. yeah. You, you'll know the pace. You'll know uh-huh. how the pace is going. So we got For that sure. going on at Patreon. And then, uh, so please join in. Like I said, only a dollar. You're listening to 100 episodes of the Q&A. And then you'll work your way up higher in tiers to the VIP where you're actually hosting RFR Q&A. It's amazing. It's amazing. And and I'm there usually on most episodes. Jason's in there for the Trek episodes. It's awesome. But, you know, like I said, it's Star Wars, etc. It could be Star Trek. It could be the Beatles. At one point, me and... Um, and and Kirk, we went through. He's another RFR VIP. We went through my my vintage concert ticket collection that I've saved since I was fourteen. Wow! And I have it all here. I mean, I got a big stack of shows. You know, it brings back memories every time I flip through oh, that. The stuff. ticket stubs are great. You know, one of the problems I'm having with modern because uh, I keep all my movie ticket stubs as well. Is uh, I don't know if you're noticing this, but they fade like crazy because they're printed down on those thermal printers. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Sometimes they allow you to purchase like souvenir tickets that they yeah, that's send cool. to you. That hard that's tickets cool. that work really well. The best tickets I ever got were at NASCAR races because they were just like giant. You're wearing this like big <laughs> billboard on your and and you you wore it on a on a on a, a, a lanyard. lanyard? Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the thing, and it's just like flapping in the wind, and like choking you as you're trying to walk up the steps to watch the race. That was your ticket into the race was a uh, yeah. lanyard. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if I put one on you, you'd probably catch wind and float away, you know, <laughs> like sail away. There he goes. Goodbye. Sail you know. away. <laughs> sail away. So All we right. got a lot of fun going on. Yeah. Patreon, YouTube also. You know, everybody's been tuning in for the Book of Boba Fett after shows. We want you guys to uh, ring the bell and subscribe, and uh, that way you get notified whenever we go live. So just want to throw in that quick plug for YouTube as well. For sure. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. We've got some news. We got oh, news. Wait a, minute. wait a minute. Before we get into news proper, mm-hmm. um, we got a we, – we mentioned uh, – actually, I think uh, uh, Jimmy Mack mentioned – we. Uh, on the last Boba Fett after show, because we you know we got to see the Rancor. So they bring in the new Rancor for Boba Fett. And one of the issues that people started to nitpick a little bit was, wait a minute, you can't ride a Rancor. You get, no, Rancors are ferocious. They're beasts. They're not loving. They don't get attached to people and all this stuff. And so we were talking about how there actually is a history of there being, you know, a, a uh, sort of a, a, a relationship between humans and rancor and riding rancors is something that the expanded universe had uh, you know through uh, uh the force unleashed and other outlets had, had shown us uh, there were actually there were some toys that came out of, of felucia jungle rancor where you could put the rider on top and all that jim you pointed out the earliest reference to that that you could think of was from the courtship of princess leia yeah, uh, novelization uh, or novel that came out um, following the Thrawn trilogy in the early days of the of the EU, mm-hmm. and um, of course that made people that brought up that that book in in people's minds. And apparently the author, I've not read this book, but apparently the author is um, having some health troubles. Yeah, his name is Dave Wolverton, and uh, he got a shout out on the after show this week. Because there was this line of dialogue in the book of Boba Fett, uh, delivered brilliantly by uh, the guy who does everything brilliantly because he just does it his way, Danny Trejo, um, <laughs> as the rancor keeper. Or do you say rancor? R- I, rancor? I, I'm a, a I'm rancor. A rancor. Yeah. I'm a rancor, rancor. myself. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I hear people say uh, rancor. Well, I've heard it. I hear uh, mm-hmm. Big Steve says it. Steve Glosson. Podcasting's <laughs> Steve Glosson. Yes. The great Steve Glosson. Um, in this uh, most recent episode of the Book of Boba Fett, though, there was some information given to us about Rancors from Danny Trejo, and uh, we got the clip. I thought they were bred just to fight. They're powerful fighters, so that is what most know. But they form strong bonds with their owners. It is said that the witches of Dathomir even rode them through the forest and fens. Yes, uh-huh. and they did. In Dave Wolverton's book, The Courtship of Princess Leia, and also the witches of Dathomir were introduced in that book. So it's I kind was of just a groundbreaking say, okay, when, EU book. When you mentioned that mm-hmm. on the after show, 
Yeah. I, I, that didn't that didn't connect with me. So Witches of Death and Mirror, which we saw, uh, you know, quite stunningly in the Clone Wars, that goes all the way back to Courtship of Princess Leia. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did not know that. Because that yeah, book so, was kind of, speaking of divisive, I remember that book being yeah. somewhat divisive. It was a hard act to follow, you know, in the wake of the Zahn, you know, uh, renaissance of Star Wars in, in, in book form. But uh, is it, but but it has made significant contributions to Star Wars canon. It sounds like. Oh well, well, this book alone. I mean, it's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I can't recall if he wrote anything else. Uh, Wikipedia would probably answer that question. But uh, what I saw today, uh, I, I just couldn't believe the timing of it because we we're just talking about him. Mm-hmm. Um, Bard's Tower on Facebook reported today that. Dave Farland, also known as Dave Wolverton, is in a coma, and uh, their thoughts are with with David oh. and, and his family at this time. They originally were reporting that he had passed away, and they oh. had some nice things to say about him. David is one of the great writers of our time and was a great teacher of our community. He was a man of i'm gonna I'm gonna change it to he is a man of great wisdom, patience, and patience for the craft. Great friend, kind person, generous teacher. It cannot be estimated what he gave to all the shaper of worlds and crafters of stories out there. It cannot be estimated his loss. So he obviously is a man who uh, has made some big impact on his peers and contemporaries. Uh, Seems like he uh, was in a mentorship role. I mean, just by reading this, I I think it's easy to read between the lines. Uh, Kind person and generous teacher. Uh, so he obviously had an effect on uh, writers uh, of our generation and uh, beyond. And uh, he's in a coma right now as we're recording this episode. Mm. And so I just want to wish him Sad. the best. You know, I just like, wow, the timing you know, on the same week, some of his concepts for the witches of Dathomir become canon via the exposition from Danny Trejo. And uh, I just thought that was cool. You know, of course, witches of Dathomir. Right. Been in the canon for a while. But that specific thing, I don't recall any of the witches writing rancors in the Clone Wars. I just don't recall no. it. In fact, I don't. I'm trying to think if we saw a rancor in the Clone Wars. I know we saw. No. The well, we saw a rancor in. Uh, we saw a rancor in. Um, a baby rancor. What was it? Uh, Chubby? In, Chibi? The Bad Batch. In the Bad Batch. Yeah, Muchi. Muchi. Um, but, you know, in looking at this, um, for those of you uh, on Patreon, all access, you're seeing the video of this show. But I'm, I'm looking at the cover of the Courtship of Princess Leia novelization. And I got to tell you, there's a there's a there's something that I'm warming up to. And I don't know that it, I, I doubt it'll ever happen. I think they're kind of, you know, just too precious about canon and all that these days. And I guess I was too once when I was younger. But uh, I, I would love to see some animated treatments of these these classic <sighs> legends eu novels i really yeah, would man i really I would. would too oh Give my us, god i mean yeah the, the heir to the empire the thrawn trilogy mm-hmm. um darth plagueis <laughs> it would yeah. just be a hoot man it would, it would be, be a awesome hoot. and you got that stuff it's right there it's right there well, remember Kathleen yeah. Kennedy uh, famously, or I should say infamously said, mm-hmm. this isn't like Marvel. We don't have all of this, uh, uh, you know, years and years of materials and, and backstories yeah, right, right, and all right, that. Right, remember right. she said that? It's like, I no, can't you, help you pretty much think, do, Kathleen. You know, is it, I, I can't help but think that she just really misrepresented what she really was thinking. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I just don't know yeah. where that statement came from because in those videos that they shot with Lynn Hale and mm. George right. at, uh, at Skywalker, when uh, the baton was being passed from Lucasfilm to Disney, um, George was sitting there and uh, he was talking about, Oh, they got trolls. It's a, <laughs> trolls, you know, and, like, and he mentioned you know, everything, everything, books, comics, everything. Yeah, you know, he said right. I can't remember what his exact yep. words were. No, but I, it was, I know it was exactly. acknowledged that all of that stuff was going to be mined for future storytelling. Yeah, and uh, those videos can all be found online. We don't have clips handy. What we do have clips handy of is uh, 
is uh, some of the uh, Book of Boba Fett media tour that's been going on. Yeah, let's Featuring do it. Uh, Tim Morrison et al. So yeah, let's dive right in. I have good news for you, my lord. That's good news. Come closer, I have good news. All right, take us through. Hey, by the way, when we play these clips... I think Jim's mentioned it a few times, but uh, in addition to having a massive, massive uh, collection of uh, high-end massive, uh, Star yeah. Wars collectibles, but this is this is also you know what we do here on the podcast is part of your wheelhouse. You've been collecting clips of Star Wars celebrities and actors and people associated with Star Wars talking about Star Wars for a long, 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 long time. So this is right. I'm just when you, we I, it's something I like to to point out once in a while when we're playing these clips. Uh, you know whether we were doing this podcast or not, Jimmy Mack would still be probably cutting down these <laughs> interviews with Tim Morrison and Ming Na Wen to add to his collection. <laughs> Staring all- into a mirror, providing commentary. <laughs> right. Wendy turns the lights on in the basement. Wendy, I'm doing something out here. <laughs> You know, kind of a king of comedy sort of situation <laughs> Ma! happening. Ma! <laughs> uh, anyway, so okay, so what do you got for us first here? Tim Morrison on the uh, on the circuit promoting Book of Every, Boba Fett. Well, everyone's talking about the the Sarlacc pit moments in uh, the Book of Boba Fett, and uh, Tim talks a little bit about what it was like to shoot in the gook, in the grime, in the sticky goo. <laughs> that made up the Sarlacc Pit set. Very claustrophobic, in fact, and uh, I got to set that day, and it uh, uh, it was really about uh, the rebirth of this character, in a way. And uh, I remember the slime, uh, and I remember not breathing too good in there. <laughs> and they had all these people moving these things around me, and I was kind of... It was very painful, actually. So, um, so uh, again, it was about the rebirth of him getting out of the Sarlacc and then being left to alone on the sands and being stripped of his armor and then beaten down by the sun. And it wasn't looking good to him. So it was nice to have that as a low point for something, something to grow from and uh, flourish into something else and trying to get himself back together again. So it's about the Boba re-rising again. <laughs> yes, yes, re-rising again, and that that's re-rise. I think they're they're doing a phenomenal job of that. And one of the topics that we took we we uh, spoke about on this week's show was is it is it enough to just assume that people know the character of Boba Fett prior to his re-rising out of the Sarlacc pit? Or do we need to see a little bit of that? And and I, Jim, when you were saying earlier about, you know, some hopes that you had had about seeing some of the characters from Empire Strikes Back, some of the other bounty hunters and things, I kind of hope that we would see a little bit of, you know, original trilogy era Boba, a little bit more of that so that we would, because right now what it feels like we're, we're doing is we're juxtaposing Tuscan Boba with gangster Boba. And I don't yeah. see a whole lot of difference. Um, what 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 might be, for me? What might be more of a of a of a juxtaposition is the solo bounty hunter man with no name Boba versus you know Tuscan Boba, for example, who cares about his his fellow you know uh, tribes people and and all of that. So that that's one little bit of a disconnect for me. Hmm. Interesting. You know, for me, the the show is uh, a lot about what Tamora Morrison brings to it. And Mm -hmm. I think the show is kind of modeled around him. And so for better or for worse, it's Tem's interpretation of Boba Fett right now that's kind of driving the machine. And since I like Tamora Morrison so much, I think I slant my my uh, enjoyment of the show kind of toward that because mm. I like mm-hmm. Tem. Yeah. Sometimes he's, he's a little stiff, you know, 
But that's how Tem is. I mean, that's how he is in the real world. And <laughs> I think in the third episode, he was turning in some of his best acting that I've seen him do yeah. in Star Wars up to this point. But a lot of the show is kind of set to his meter right now. So. And Great point. I think it's yep. it's so interesting that he's down there. He's in the Sarlacc pit with the helmet on and everything. You know, it's not stunt guy. The more right. I'm watching the show, the more I'm realizing that Tem is doing a lot of his own stunts. There is a stunt guy there. You know, don't kid yourself. Um, but oh, the credits. There's there's uh, you know, uh, funny that you bring that up because I've got I grabbed a um, a screen capture of the uh, the credits in. Um, at the end of that episode, because I was really taken by, they've got, oh, where, where is it? Oh, they've got full armor double Boba Fett, performance, let's yeah. see, stunt double Boba Fett, mm-hmm. um, full armor double Boba Fett, double young Boba Fett. There's a, there's a, there's a lot of those. Now, the double young Boba Fett is uh, obviously some of the body shots that you see, the new body shots of the Danny mm-hmm. Logan era. Uh, Danny Logan getting, uh, I think it, he's in every episode so far. In, yeah, in some yeah. fashion, that 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 face of his. He's but, received uh, credit. Yeah, yeah, and he's get. Good I love that him. he's getting the credit on. I think that's great. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. There are other Bobas, you know, out there, and and I think Tem is seeing a lot more uh, action than um, than Pedro. On the set. A, a, a thousand percent. <laughs> a, a thousand percent. And uh that that surprises me. But he has that experience. You know, he was there on the set of episode two, wearing the same helmet, essentially. Different character, but I mean, come on. Tem has experience that he's bringing to the role, which uh is really priceless, I think. And yeah. Isn't there a isn't there a video of Tem? With an umbrella, doing like a little yes. uh, little soft yeah. shoe, yeah, a little think, singing in the rain, the scene, uh, singing in the rain behind yeah. the scenes on the, I think it's on the the DVD of uh, of episode two, Attack of the Clones. Yeah. Gene <laughs> Kelly is now canon. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's funny. Man of uh, many ten, uh, many skills. Yeah, oh yeah, he's he's wonderful. You can see that on the uh, if you have the old. Attack of the Clones DVD. It's on the bonus clips. I don't know what Blu-ray or streaming. I, I don't know what anything has any. If if it's not on your copy, look at YouTube and you'll probably find right. it there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll find uh Tamora Morrison and Ming Now Wen, you know, making the rounds. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And we're I'm just pulling some of the most interesting clips that I've heard over the course of the last uh 10 days, two weeks. And uh, this this is uh, not as comprehensive, but I think I, I found some of the better comments because oh. Tem and Ming, nah, they tend to really pile on the accolades for their cast and crew mm. so mm-hmm. much that mm. it's really a lot of fluff. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, God bless them. I, I don't doubt that they're feeling that uh, legitimately. They seem like wonderful people, both of them. But, I mean, it gets really really repetitious as you're going through these interviews. So I'm trying to pull some really solid highlights or just things that I thought were interesting. So here's Tim Morrison talking to Entertainment Weekly. And Ming-Na is there, too. I don't know if you hear her on this clip. But Tim talks about what is so different about shooting Book of Boba Fett when you compare it to the experience 20. 20 something years ago of shooting attack of the clones and uh here's uh tem uh, walking down memory lane i think back in the day i didn't know what i was doing and it was 20 years ago when i was doing Django fat and i got carried away with wearing the armor and i was having so much fun and getting to work with george lucas and these ginormous sets and i think i had too much fun so this time i really you know a little bit more experienced and ming na both we're both you know but ha- done a little bit of work with television and films here and there. So this was a great opportunity just to combine everything and feed off people like Dave Filoni, understand the storylines better, understand a little bit more about Boba Fett's history. Again, I had to draw a lot on our crew who were Star Wars 
uh, nerds and fans and nuts and know <laughs> and all me. about the history. Yeah. And if I didn't know anything, I could always ask Ming Na because she was the <laughs> head of the Geek Club back in Pittsburgh. And uh, she knew everything about the backstory, even the grip, the guy pushing the camera. He knew more about Boba Fett than I did. So I was having these uh, pool of talented people around us that uh, made us perform a lot better. <laughs> oh, how do you not love this guy? I just love, I love when they're just honest and there's no BS. And oh, there's no BS with Tim tell, Morrison. You can tell two things. He doesn't know squat about Boba Fett, number one, which is fine, but he's having the time of his life. Yeah. Yes. You know, that that's what comes yes. through. I don't care if he knows about Boba Fett. Who cares? Um, yeah. But what's really interesting there, I think one of the one of the gems is that uh, Ming Na? What did he say well, in Pennsylvania? What did he yeah, say? Yeah, well, that's. Yeah, did you know that Ming Na Wen and Dave Filoni attended the same high school in Pennsylvania? Not at the I same had, time, but uh, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, they they went to the same high school. That's crazy, and <laughs> so she's uh, she's into it. She's she's a Star Wars fan. It sounds. Yeah, like. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's yeah. cool. She's, she's put that on display many times. Okay. Many, many times. And she really follows the story and understands the story and where things are going, whereas Tem is acting through his scenes, but really not putting the big picture together so much. <laughs> right. Right. And it gets explained to him, and it it sticks a little bit. But then he goes off and has a few beers. <laughs> I want to have a soap. beer. I want to have a beer with Tamora Morrison. My mm. God, I want to have a beer with. I've had beers with the other Bobas. I've had beers with Jeremy Bullock. I've had beers, many beers with Daniel Logan. And but... you've had Dickie beers. <laughs> He's the stunt guy from Return of the Jedi, <laughs> Dickie Beer, who I don't think we've ever talked to. On oh come Rebel on, Force Radio. we had to. No, have. no? I don't ever recall talking no. to Dickie okay. Beer. We talked to Don Bees, who stood in for Boba Fett in the Star Wars Special Edition. So I thought you had beers Mark with Anthony Dickie Beers. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Only mm. two of them. Only two yeah. of them. Um, two good which ones. Which is more than I ever thought I would have when I was waiting for that. Boba Fett action figure to show up in my mailbox 1979 when I was a kid. Uh, God, to think then, you know. Imagine. I would be having beers with any Boba Fett, especially Jeremy <laughs> Bullock, the great Jeremy <laughs> Bullock. Holy oh, legend. Yeah. These were heroes. I mean, I, you know, I didn't hear about Jeremy Bullock when he was making the fan convention rounds. I knew his name. It was burned into my brain the day Empire Strikes Back dropped and I saw Boba Fett on the screen for the first time. I was right. like, yeah, Jeremy Bullock. Jeremy <laughs> Bullock is Boba Fett. It just, and I felt that way about all the other actors too. It's, as a matter of fact, I don't think I ever knew what a film director was before George Lucas. Yeah. He was the right. first film director who I, whose name I knew and understood. Yeah. In my life. In my life. I mean, you know, Walt Disney. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I didn't even understand Walt Disney as a director, you know? No, you no. Know. I just, I saw him you as know. almost like Santa Claus or something he is like, like that. You know, I mean, cartoons. Who, yeah, who directs right. a cartoon? Right, you know? right. <laughs> Dave Filoni. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're animated oh, and, and you know what? That's, that's not a joke, though. I mean, I just said Dave Filoni and Walt Disney in the same sentence. So, right, right. you know. Nothing but praise here from me. Well, Tem, Tem, uh, you know, throwing the accolades at uh, Dave Filoni, hanging out with the. It seems like Dave is, you know, for Tem is is providing that same that same role as he did time and time again on the animated series Clone Wars and Rebels, educating the the, the talent, the actors on, you know, where they fit in, giving them the context. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Every Clone Wars actor we ever spoke to explain that role of Dave Filoni and how he influenced them and explained things to them. And, All right, here's what's really going on. <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> but yeah, good for him. Good for him. Yeah. And it's good to hear that he's there. He's active. He's on the set all the time, uh, just like he was with the Mandalorian. And I was afraid maybe Dave was bogged down in pre-production for Ahsoka, but he's proven time and time again to be something of a machine who could keep a lot of plates spinning at once. And yeah, so uh, I, I hope he doesn't go through any overload with this. But I'm really looking forward to the uh, Ahsoka. Also, I'm I'm. Looking forward to Dave's episode of the Book of Boba Fett that he is yes. directing this season. It could be coming up maybe even next week. We never know. We never get the heads up Mm-mm. on uh, who's directing the episode. This week, I knew it was directed by Robert Rodriguez the second I saw Danny Trejo. And we <laughs> talked about that in the after show. But uh, Ming-Na Wen and Tim Morrison, uh, they're... Uh, hanging out in Jabba's palace, which is pretty cool. And uh, they talk about, you know, Ming-Na especially weighs in with uh, some, you can tell, listen to her talk about shooting in Jabba's palace. And and she gives an indication to you that she really understands Star Wars and the environment she's in. Meanwhile, Tim Morris is like, oh, look at that guy over there. And that guy, oh my God. You know, his head, (laughs) Tim's head is blowing up, but uh, he gets it. He gets it. The details were impeccable, and uh, I, I really feel like what they added to the little things uh, to sort of remind, they're just like these little Easter eggs that they put in. Suddenly, your imagination in your bedroom as a kid, playing with your toys, uh, is now the real deal, you know? the the. The, the throne room moves like it's supposed to. There is a trap door. Um, there's all these creatures and, you know, characters that have come back from the past. It's- yeah, that was cool when we sort of got dragged forward. And yeah, the, I the love pushing that empty, button. Idiot, I, 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 would, I would constantly push that button, that little button that opens yeah. the trap door. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, it, it, Did it, you hear Tim like, what he said? Yeah. And that's cool when the thing it goes back and then forward and then <laughs> is that what you were talking what, about? Yeah, it's yeah, it's almost like listening to Arnold Schwarzenegger do film commentary train. <laughs> <laughs> but because he said I he am, I'm, I'm running through the trees, I'm going through the chopper. Uh, look at me, look at over there. <laughs> But he says, he says in there. Yeah, it was fun when we started moving. We looked out in the thing and it said, it's empty, you idiot. <laughs> I missed that Play part. back the tape. Yeah. Play back the tape and just listen. You have to really, really lock in on Tamora Morrison because Ming-Na starts talking over him because she's yeah. always afraid he's going to be dropping spoilers. So she's Yeah, trying, probably. Mm-hmm. Is empty, you idiot. He almost sounds like Arnold at that point. <laughs> yeah, that was cool when we sort of got dragged forward. And yeah. Then, uh, I love pushing that button. Empty, idiot. I, 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 would, I would constantly push that button, that little button that opens yeah. the trap door. It's empty, idiot. Uh, no, there's no, there's no beast in there. <laughs> it's empty. Didn't you see the movie? The, 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 the guy in the black, he killed it. It's a hoot to hear uh, him having such a good time with all this stuff. It really and, is. And Ming-Na's right. You know, this is you as a kid. Oh, no, man. The action figures. And uh, we're right back there in Jabba's Palace from Return of the Jedi. These are places I really didn't think we'd ever return to. My goodness. You know, Crazy to think about it. Yeah. Crazy yeah. to think about it. And, I love uh, Jabba's I, Palace. You know, Jabba's Palace is sort of my my cantina. How you know, like your uh, Billy Mac is just like a nut about the cantina. You know, he yeah, went to all of the different panels at the celebrations. You know, the, uncovering all of the different characters and the actors in the cantina, and 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 probably so. I was probably of a similar age when I saw Jabba's Palace as Bill was when he saw the cantina. It made such a huge impression. All yeah. those crazy creatures. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're right back in there. Never thought I would return. And uh, never thought I'd see Boba Fett riding with the Tuscans. That's uh, wild, man. I mean, it's these are these are curveballs that are, are really intriguing to me. And it. The, the way they're connecting the dots makes a lot of sense to me as a longtime Star Wars fan, and I really enjoy seeing it all go down. And uh, Tim Morrison talks about what it's like to... Uh, have the Tuscans back into the story and Boba Fett being inserted among them. And he talks about the stunt work he does with the Tuscans as well. 
Yeah, it was good to bring the Tuscan family alive in this series as well and find out more about their culture. And I work closely with uh, the stunt boys. Um, I was kind of blessed that growing up, we have our traditional kind of Maori dancers and we have one of our weapons, which is a staff, and we call it the taiaha. So I was blessed that I was able to utilize some of those skills. But again, uh, our stunt team did a great job. And um, if there's anything too dangerous, we had a... You know, we have a double on hand just to do the dangerous stuff. But in the end, uh, they couldn't find anyone uh, quite good looking enough. So I had to really do all my own stuff. <laughs> so, um, so I'm still recovering. But again, it was a, a wonderful opportunity, not only to show, show the drama side, but also that uh, uh, grandma and grandpa here can still, you know, can still kick it along a little bit. <laughs> Grandma and grandpa. Well, I wow. mean, how how incredible is it though? I we mentioned this before at one um on the after show, but to have a fifty five and a sixty year old uh you know helming 58. a fifty eight. Sorry, a fifty eight yes. and a sixty year old. I don't helming, mean to speak about a you know, Mingna's age, but right, she a, is a, a series uh, like this. it's it's incredible. And no yeah. one sits there and goes, Oh, this is a story about two old people. I mean, you know, no. when I was a kid, if you were fifty eight or sixty, you were gonna be on Golden Girls. You were gonna be hanging oh with uh, Blanche and uh, Betty White and all those. I well, mean, you weren't gonna you know, be in times an action series. <laughs> Times have yeah. changed, my friend. Times right. have changed. Thankfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, it, and it's awesome. <laughs> it's simply it's right. awesome. So, yes. okay, let's get controversial. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Let's bring up the controversy. Boba Fett's ship, the Slave One, as we've known it mm. for 40 years. 40 years we've known it as the Slave One. Well, um, Got news for you guys. I don't think we're going to be hearing anybody refer to it as the Slave One in the Book of Boba Fett. And Tamora Morrison confirms and reveals the new name for Slave One. I think we call it the Fire Spray. I think I've mentioned it in a couple of episodes. Yeah. I don't think Fire Spray. I think it is a gunship now. That's what we're calling it. We're the calling gunship. it a Fire Spray Gunship. Fire Spray Gunship. Fire spray gunship. Now, um, okay, so I I drive a, a Volkswagen, right? I, I drive a Volkswagen Jetta. If I understand this correctly, that would be like me calling my car. Instead of call, me calling my car like Betsy or, you know, Betsy. some people have names for their car. My grandmother always had names for her cars. No kidding. Yeah, always had a name for her car. And that's why I came up with Betsy. She had a white Monte Carlo, a 1983 white Monte Carlo. She called it Betsy. And uh, so rather than calling it Betsy, you would just call it Monte Carlo. Because that's my understanding. The fire spray, as I understand it, is the sort of the name of that class of vessel. Is that right? Yes. Yes, this is true. Okay. The fire spray gunship has always been, yes, the type of starship that Boba Fett flies. But not the actual name the bounty right. hunter christened it with. Yeah, and I don't mean to be insensitive to if if people are really genuinely offended that a Star Wars ship is named Slave One, then you know I don't I don't want to belittle them or anything. But I've never met anyone like that, and uh, I think this is a case of the advocacy groups coming in and and, and Disney listens to them and uh, it. They're on the Disney payroll, quite honestly. Yeah, and right. they say, Reviewing well, you can't, things. You can't yeah. go on with that. And then there's also an attempt to make Boba Fett the anti-hero as opposed to just mm -hmm. simply a villain or a bad guy or whatever. Right. Because they see the bankability of the character. For sure. But, I mean, I don't understand why the character, I, I guess, you know, we have to root for the protagonist. And if the protagonist is doing crappy stuff all the time, he's kind of hard to root for. That's a tangled web. But uh, it does appear that, you know, this isn't just yeah. a box of Legos. This isn't right. a Funko Pop. This isn't uh, a coloring book. This is actual live action Star Wars where we're seeing uh, a name that's uh, stuck to the specific starship forever. Yeah. And now the name is being changed. Uh, I do want to note that if you go to StarWars.com and check out their data bank, mm. I don't want to say data bank because that's so Star Trek. 
Mr. Data. Uh, so I say data, okay? Data. Even, even though the Chicagoan in me wants to go, data bank. Okay. <laughs> Reel it in. We're talking about StarWars.com. They still identify the ship as the Slave One. Now, either someone's asleep at the wheel over there and didn't get the mm. memo, that Lego and the coloring books and the Funko Pops and the uh, the Book of Boba Fett producers all got. Now, we but know... it still exists. I got a question. Um, we yes. know that a lot of the... Some of the Star Wars characters were... Uh, given names by the, the, the team at Hasbro, or at Kenner at the time, as they were mm-hmm. creating action figures. Do we know who would have named the Slave One the Slave One? Does it appear in the actual script? It's an interesting thing about it. There was a contest at ILM, and staff members submitted names mm. to be potentially considered for Boba Fett ship, and that was an ILM staffer. Who submitted oh. the name? Okay. Who the actual ILM staffer was, the name escapes me. But I don't think it was like a Phil Tippett or you know one of those big <laughs> names, right? Right. It's Dennis Murin. But they had a contest. They had a little contest. Uh huh. Yeah. And so that's how that happened. So well, it's not like be- you know you know people. I have heard people yelling and screaming. You know, George Lucas called it that. You can't. But <laughs> eh. ILM. It was it was a guy at ILM. So okay. Um, you know, we're precious about this stuff, and I don't blame anyone for uh, pushing against that kind of change. But uh, as we rock along with the book of Boba Fett, we're clearly seeing an evolution for him as a character. And um, yeah, you know. that was the first. That was the first uh, vehicle that I owned myself as a, as a kid because I, I my my brother had mm. the Millennium Falcon and the Land Speeder, but I remember going into a children's palace. And seeing the slave one, wow! Yeah. Children's wow, palace, man. and there seeing the slave one, and you know the yeah. reason I wanted it, I didn't want it for the ship. I wanted it for the Han Solo and Carbonite accessory that, that it was, came with. That's that what I wanted. Was the thing, man? That was what you were chasing. Yes, and yeah, so I got that Boba Fett. That, yeah. and then I realized how what a, what a great what a great thing it was. Yeah. Um, and I in in the in the box, I still remember the exactly <laughs> the way the box looked on the shelf and all of that. So, That's great. Uh, yeah, I get it. And I'm with you. I mean, look, if you're legit offended, okay. Uh, but I haven't, I don't know anyone who was. I don't know anyone who is. And um, it's. I, I sometimes wonder if this stuff is more preventative rather than curative. Like, ah, oh, we don't want that headache. Let's just change it now. Well, you know, but, 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 but you're right. We know that there is uh, a group, I don't want to call them censors, but they do review this stuff um, because they're just trying to get these corporations like Disney out of, you know, harm's way. Oh, God. They don't want the premiere of the Book of Boba Fett to be overshadowed by some controversy because they call his, his ship the Slave One and how insensitive that is. I, from a business standpoint, I understand. I think it's crazy. I think it's laughable and, and silly. But that's where we are today. That's Well, where we I'll are. also like to point out that it has never been identified by name in live action Star Wars. That is true. So that is very, true. you know, I mean, Tem says he clearly will call it the fire spray gunboat or gunship. glass boat or gunship, what? whatever you call it. <laughs> But, like, you know, Tim, he doesn't understand half the stuff he's saying, so he might say at one point, you know, someone is trying to help him get his ship back or something. Yeah. And they'll say, well, well, what kind of ship is it? It's a fire spray blast boat gun ship. Right, whatever, you, whatever it's called. <laughs> I can't even say it. It doesn't roll off my tongue. It's no, been around no. forever. As a matter of fact, I have a history with that little piece of trivia. It's been around for so long. Back in the 90s. I was on a radio show, and they were, you know, opened up the phone lines to quiz the Star Wars guy. And we were doing an interview with the lineup gang outside of the Chinese theater in Hollywood. And we were checking in with them on the air to, you know, talk to them about the wacky stuff that was happening as they were camping out waiting for, I believe this was episode two. 
And so uh, it's like, yeah, well, let's put Jimmy Mack on the spot and we'll quiz him on Star Wars trivia and we'll put him up against the super fan who's camped out waiting in line. Why aren't you camped out, they would say to me. I'm like, guys, I, I work here with you. I mean, you know, that's thanks for the, the vote of confidence. But then I was like, well, why aren't I campy now? What's the matter with me? Uh, but that's a whole other story uh, that's between me and my psychiatrist. Um, <laughs> my psychiatrist is Jason Swank, actually. Yes. So, um, and usually my, uh, the uh, psychiatry yes, sessions happen here on Rebel Force Radio. But so they put me up for this quiz, and a guy said, what kind of starship is the Slave One? And I was like, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I should have said no EU. You know, let's just stick with the films. I'll smoke you all out of the water. But, oh, they're doing EU. And it was it was kind of a fresh term at that time, actually. Mm. You know, now it's been around for so many decades. But uh, there was a time when, you know, there was a lot of Star Wars terminology, especially in the 90s, when it was coming up like springtime and you use the best fertilizer in the world. I, there was so much Star Wars content hitting you. It was all fresh and new. And it's stuff that is now part of the foundation of Star Wars and just a second thought to anyone. But back then, we were all trying to soak it all in and read everything and learn this new expanded universe that was surrounding Star Wars, which I'm so thankful it hasn't been completely abandoned. Like... Um, like it actually was for a few years, it seemed, when uh, Disney took over and uh, I think it was 2014, you know, they didn't yeah. want to be bounded in by the, the confines of a moon f- crushing Chewbacca to death. You know, how are we going <laughs> to explain that in The Force Awakens? Yeah. So they just blew up the entire expanded universe. But as we see, they're cherry picking from it, and yes. it's coming into play all the it's time. It's the farm team. I love team. that. It's the farm I love team. that. But as far as the Slave One goes, uh, name changes are weird because uh, if you're a sports fan and you've been going to the same stadium for years and years, and it changes the sponsor purchases the title rights to the stadium and you've been calling it one thing for years and years and then now all of a sudden it's you know corporate name ballpark corporate name stadium and you always knew it is other corporate name stadium (laughs) you know sometimes you just keep calling it that Um, used to be named they used to be named after people more than they were named. Now they're named after companies. It, it, That's it right. Yeah. Like well, that. all of it. All of it. It's right. big money in those naming rights. Right. And it's good. It actually benefits your local team and your local facility when that happens, as long as there aren't crooked politicians skimming off the top. And believe me, <laughs> I live in Illinois. I know all about that. But uh, the Willis Tower in downtown Chicago is formerly the Sears Tower. And it's the tallest skyscraper in Chicago and one of the tallest in the world, quite honestly. At one point, it was the tallest skyscraper in the world. And I don't know a single person who calls it Willis Tower. Everyone still calls it Sears Tower, even though the name change happened uh, 20 years ago. So. What you talking about, Willis? <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um <laughs> What you talking about, Willis? What you talking about? So, Slave One, you know, I think fans are going to latch onto that name. They can call it Fire Spray Gunship or whatever they call it, and it'll always be the Slave One to fans. And, yeah. uh, you know, I don't I don't see what's wrong with that. No, I, I, I think you're right. They can change it on as many toy packages as you want, but, you know, the cat's out of the, the barn, I guess. You know, we're mm-hmm. always going to call it the slave one, um, even just by habit. You know, it's not out of an act of not being compassionate or sensitive to other people. It's just that's what it is. So um, I want to just credit yeah. that last clip that I don't know if we said, but Tamora Morrison was talking to the rap. And that's oh, the rap. where, you know, good good for him. He, he yeah. pulled that out of uh, Tamora Morrison because he must be plugged into the fan base, whoever the guy was who asked that question, for the rap, uh, because uh, that's something we've been wondering about. Now, speaking of that uh, gunship, yes. Tamora Morrison was talking to ET Canada, 
Entertainment Tonight Canada. Okay. And he almost spoils <laughs> he almost spoils a key moment in chapter seven. And and the reason why oh, we no. know he almost spoils that moment is because Ming Na cuts him off. And it's really comical <laughs> how this all goes down. And if you listen closely, Tem is talking about the gunship. So I assume he's talking about the slave one. But yeah, listen closely and it's just like I said, it's kind of comical as uh, somehow Ming Na Wen has been uh, designated to be the one to hold the leash on Tamora Morrison. And I don't, <laughs> I just don't see this going well. <laughs> we have way too much fun, and I think what was nice was that some of that, the humor and everything was, you know, that that we had between us, s- kind of snuck into the relationship between Fennec and Boba. Because uh, no, even though either. they're, yeah, even though they're like bounty hunters and you know assassins. This is a great scene when we're on the D- gunship and we're both cruising. Ah, da, 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 da. <laughs> is, that, is that in the Mandalorian? No, no. Uh, so it's a great scene. So I was going to talk about that. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, it's a great scene. Oh, it's getting warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. She's like, yeah. <laughs> And so now you know why they have like Tem on a really crappy microphone. And Ming oh, Na's what was with that? It sounded like he sound. was in the back to tube. Yeah, doing that interview. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the pod. Yeah. So yeah, she's got the leash on Tem, and uh, she's shutting him down when he tries to go all uh, uh, Zhang Zhang Wen. Was that his <laughs> well, name? Yeah. The, when yeah, he died, they all dead. And they, they're yeah. all dead. I'll tell the whole convention center they're all dead. <laughs> Have fun going to the movie. <laughs> never heard from him again. No. When it came to Star He's Wars He's never seen again, I don't no. think. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, not not in the realm of Star Wars. He's right. actually a very popular and well-known actor. Yes. Um, in, well, and a uh, beloved character in Star Wars. I, so many people oh, I love, love that. I love those yeah, guys. Yeah. I love both those guys. You almost shot me. You're welcome. I love that. <laughs> I just That's my favorite. God, I love that. <laughs> 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 so uh yeah M- ming na she's she's got the leash on the uh, nightwind assassins and she also has a very similar leash on tamora morrison <laughs> when it comes to these interview situations yeah, there's this great scene where we're on that <laughs> fire spray <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i love that i love that yeah what was with his microphone though that was uh and he's just like talking into his laptop in a very yep. roomy sounding room. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Been, been there, <laughs> heard that. <laughs> Can that, there should be the next time I say something wrong? Would you do that? That would be our. I'll, I'll uh, give you the ch- our code. Ch- ch- sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, more uh, highlights from uh, their media tour, uh, probably. Uh, in the in the coming weeks as they continue yeah. to make the rounds. Also, uh, more next week from uh, from Robert Rodriguez and uh, uh, something interesting, uh, Jim, that you pulled uh, about George Lucas talking about the death of Boba Fett. So that's a little teaser. Make sure you're here next week on Rebel Force Radio. But for now, we're going to go and see, uh, check out Star Wars in pop culture. Rebel Force Radio. You've already made that Star Wars reference. Your source for the Force. Star Wars parody. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get enough of that. All right. Now, this is tough because I lo- I saw this on the rundown. I saw Cobra Kai season four, episode 10. I'm not there yet. Mm. I've, been, I've been watching Cobra Kai. It's appointment yeah. viewing in the house here. Is this a big spoiler? No, no. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't watch the show, so I don't oh, okay. know what the hell okay. I was seeing. It happens very <laughs> early in the episode. If if that okay. helps, I mean, all right. Uh, before things really unravel, uh, maybe <laughs> this is a spoiler. I don't know. Blame Netflix, not me. Um, <laughs> but I could tell when a show was really popular, and Cobra Kai is on my radar right now. Yes. I, I plan on sitting down and watching it because so many people send us emails about the Star Wars reference that happens. Oh. In the Ooh. season four finale, the episode called The Rise, episode Ooh. 10, The Rise. And um, there's some karate stuff going on here, man, just like you expect from a show called Cobra Kai based on the karate kid. Uh, Star Wars reference, it happens during a karate meet, during, uh, you know, right in Ooh. the middle of the thing. Uh, there's some, uh, well, you just hear the thing and you'll know what's going on. All right, here we go. Fire! 
Go to your senses. All right. I had a hard enough time beating him when he was on the good side of the force. Now that he's gone all Sith, I feel like a helpless Jedi youngling about to get slaughtered. Okay, well, you're taller. You have the high ground. That's how Obi-Wan beat Anakin, right? There you go. <laughs> there it is. Cobra Kai. You have the high ground. Go be Anakin. Or go, go be, be Obi-Wan. Anakin. Or Obi-Wan, whoever they yeah. were. Yeah. So that's Cobra Kai. I hope that didn't spoil anything for you. Could really, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I could recognize yeah, the voices, yeah. but that's all right. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not spoiler averse. I mean, crazy spoiler averse. Mm, 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 um, you know, I don't go out of my way uh, to see spoilers. And if somebody says, "Oh, here's a here's a rundown of everything that's going to happen on Book of Boba Fett," I'm like, "No, I don't. I don't want that." Yeah, right. But right. Um, yeah, a little clip here. It's not gonna not gonna hurt me. But, all right, all right. Yeah. Just want to make sure your Cobra Kai experience is <laughs> optimal. Wow. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, you looking yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, uh, Star Wars reference in the new Leonardo DiCaprio flick, star-studded flick on Netflix called Don't Look Up, um, satire about the end of the world and how uh, idiot human beings react to it. Um, don't look up. There is a Star Wars reference. It happens about midway through the film with Leo DiCaprio and Kate Blanchett uh, involved in a little bit of pillow talk where they're revealing information about each other. Oh, all right. My father was a middle school geography teacher. My mother, she cut hair out of the kitchen. Uh, about two years ago, our, our family dog, Jojo, died, which was really, really emotional. I can't remember crying that much ever and um i finally got my uh my my star wars poster signed by mark hamill it's in the garage it's uh, yeah <laughs> okay good <laughs> wait a minute wait a minute is this is this uh, a psychiatrist and their patient or is this these are two no, people told you. romantically inclined or romantically involved and this having is pillow some talk this is yes, talk. romantically involved. Okay, so yeah, yeah. so you do the deed, and then you sit there and you bear your soul about your dog and your Mark Hamill poster. <laughs> well, she had revealed stuff about her. You know, it was kind of like a give and take oh, situation. Oh, I see. Okay, and, I see. And you know, I mean, I just uh, appreciate uh, Leo for uh, you know we know he's a Star Wars fan. We he sure may have ad libbed that moment actually. Yeah, because uh, it probably actually happened to Leonardo DiCaprio. I remember when the first Midnight Madness happened, Star Wars Episode One. There was national news footage of Leonardo DiCaprio in the crowd with everyone else trying to grab a Darth Maul action figure, and I said, "Props to Leo. He's one of us." <laughs> I never thought I'd say that here on Rebel Force Radio, but. Uh, and Leo, if you're listening, show at rebelforceradio.com. Got some questions for you. Yeah. Hey, hey a, a, a very oft rumored Anakin Skywalker uh, was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. That's right. Imagine. Imagine. But, you know, Hayden owns it. We'll be seeing more of him in Kenobi, and I'm looking forward to that. I am too. I am yeah. too. I am too. You know, you, we can pick all the nits we want, but man, at the end of the day, the fact that we get. Uh, you know, once a week treated to this it, it, incredible new chapter of, of Star Wars. And yeah, there's going to be things in it you like, some th things you, in it you don't like. I mean, perspective, as you were saying earlier, Jim, you know, uh, perspective is really a crazy thing as, you, as uh, entertainment gets older and you get older and you look back and you think, well, at one time, um, you mentioned this on this week's after show, you know, uh, Yoda was controversial. What's this mm. Muppet doing in my Star Wars? He sounds like Fozzie Bear. Mm -hmm. uh, get him out of there. And now Yoda is one of the most beloved, most iconic characters in the history of film. Um, so you just never know. I, and that, I think that's what I'm enjoying so much about Mando and Book of Boba Fett. I am trying to take it in stride and knowing that it's, um, you know, what's, what's today's controversy might be tomorrow's icon. Yeah. Strap in. Strap in. That's uh, the best advice I could give anyone. Just strap in and we'll see you on the other side. And uh, I think we'll have a good ride all the way through. Chewie, get us out of here! 
All right, that's going to wrap things up. The first Rebel Force Radio weekly show in the can for 2022. This is going to be fun. I think I, I think watching this show, Book of Boba Fett, listening to the clips of the the stars and the creatives behind it, it's a ball. It's a ball. We're so glad we get to share it with you. So make sure you're here with us next week for more. Uh, in the meantime, if you want more Rebel Force Radio in between shows, the best way to do it is become a member of our Patreon supporters. You get weekly full show video. So the podcast you're listening to now, you can actually see our faces. You can see some of the things we're putting up on the screens, um, as well as exclusive podcasts, like we mentioned earlier before, the RFR Q&A, very, very popular, Comlink, uh, Babu Freaks, Clone Wars Declassified, Remastered, and it is the exclusive home to the heralded Star Wars podcast, Star Wars Oxygen. Those archives only available if you're a Patreon member. And you can also jump to the head of the queue uh, when you're calling in the Book of Boba Fett after show or any of our live after shows, if you identify yourself to our wonderful call screener as a Patreon member, we will pop you on as quick as possible. We try to get through all the calls, but RFR Patreon members uh, take precedence. And uh, it really is just a wonderful community. Some of the, the best Star Wars fans you'd ever want to meet. They just like to talk about Star Wars based on the merits of Star Wars and not some of the other stuff that gets dragged into our, uh, our uh, you know, pop culture conversation. All those details at patreon.com slash rebelforceradio or go to rebelforceradio.com, click on the Patreon banner. Um, don't forget about YouTube. It is the exclusive home to our after shows, our live shows that we do uh, for Book of Boba Fett. Those are on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Unless they're not. We do have rain dates for those. But uh, so far, so good. Knock on wood. We've been able to hit those uh, on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Um, but in addition to those live shows, you can also find uh, just an absolute repository of some of the best classic bits, interviews, parodies uh, of Rebel Force Radio history. You can check all that out. We've got playlists. If you're, you know, we mentioned Jeremy Bullock earlier. There's a... Uh, uh, highlights and and uh, interviews that we've done with jeremy bullock over the years dave prouse you name it they're all there at rebel force radio's pay, uh, youtube page so go to youtube.com slash rebel force radio and if you like to uh, communicate with us in between shows we'd love to hear from you uh best way to do it is uh, to send us a voicemail you do it a couple of different ways you can uh, attach it as an audio file and send it to show it at rebelforceradio.com or you can give us a call 708-320-1737 that's 708-3201-RFR leave us that voicemail uh, you can uh, chat with us on our social media channels like Facebook Twitter and Instagram and don't forget about the official website for all things and everything Rebel Force Radio rebelforceradio.com but above all if you want to help the show out please spread the word tell your friends if you got Everybody has that Star Wars guy in the office or that Star Wars gal in the office. Tell them, ask them, do you listen to RFR? Do you listen to Rebel Force Radio? And if they don't, uh, let them know that it's. And spread the, uh, the word on social media, too. Yeah, share the show. That shows. would really help. Hashtag so Rebel Force Radio. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one thing to make a comment on our Facebook post, but share that post. Say, hey, I'm listening mm -hmm. to Rebel Force Radio. They're doing a discussion about the Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett. Check it out. Um, These guys are idiots. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so please listen. And uh, if your podcatcher of choice allows you to subscribe, we love to have the, subscri the uh, subscription. We love to also have your reviews. Just one rule, please. Make them good. And we are streaming online 24-7 at uh, apps like Apple Podcasts, Jedi News, iHeart, TuneIn, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, Audible, Pandora, Samsung, anywhere you can find podcasts, you're going to find us right here at Rebel Force Radio, and you'll find us here next week on RFR for a whole lot more. So until then, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. For RFR, Rebel Force Radio, I'm Jason. I'm Jimmy Mack. And remember... The Force will be with you, always. You almost shot me. You're welcome. <laughs>